and these are in listen only mode. Well, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Thanks once again for being with us this evening. Uh, happy March, happy Lent, and I hope everyone survived the uh, <clears throat> blizzard that we experienced yesterday. Uh, this is Bill Brannick out of the Office of Catholic Education, Director of Technology here, and I am excited uh, that you have joined us this evening. Certainly, we have a wonderful webinar this evening focusing on stream in the elementary classroom. Uh, throughout the the webinar this evening and throughout the the school year and during the summer don't for, don't forget to be able to connect with us online on social media using the hashtag AOP tech it's a great resource to be able to see what all is going on in the Archdiocese of Philadelphia schools to be able to connect with individuals at other schools and to be able to share resources amongst us as educators This evening, I am thrilled once again to be uh, welcoming Aaron Hines. Aaron, how are you this, or this evening? I'm doing wonderfully. Still have a parking spot and everything in South Philly, so I'm, I'm thrilled right now. <laughs> Congratulations, and they plowed your street. I'm happy to hear. They did. And we have great news from Alyssa DeVito, who is not joining us this evening. Uh, Alyssa is a little bit busy right now as she is officially a mom. Uh, Alyssa delivered her, her baby boy, Noah James, on Monday morning at 2.39 a.m. And Alyssa is doing well, and she and Tim are thrilled to have Noah uh, as a part of their family. So as we, uh, as we prepare to pray in just a moment, certainly want to be able to keep uh, Alyssa Noah and Tim in our prayers this evening. And as similar to all of our agendas for our webinars, in just a moment, we will pray and talk about Archive and Act 48 information, and then we will introduce our wonderful presenters this evening and then jump right into our presentation. So if you would, place yourselves in, uh, in the presence of our Lord and join with me in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. O Lord, who has mercy upon all, take away from me my sins, and mercifully kindle in me the fire of thy Holy Spirit. Take away from me the heart of stone, and give me a heart of flesh, a heart to love and adore you, a heart to delight in you, to follow and enjoy you, for sake of Jesus, my Lord. Amen. St. John Newman, pray for us. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. And just as a reminder, or if you are a first time attendee, uh, our webinar will be archived on our YouTube channel, which you can find by searching YouTube at AOP Tech. And also those who signed up for Act 48, Act 48 is available uh, for March and April by, by registering and attending both the March and April webinars. Uh, you should receive a evaluation form shortly after uh, the webinar has concluded uh, and before the end of the week. Evaluations are to be completed to be able to uh, receive your Act 48 credit. And you must, again, attend both the March and April webinars to be able to receive Act 48 credit. As we look out at the presentation, we will have an opportunity both to, uh, to hear from the presentation and some formal times to be able to, uh, to answer any questions that you may have. And throughout the presentation, you also have the ability to be able to ask private questions. These are questions that uh, Aaron will be monitoring in the question window, which you can access um, through the floating control panel on the right-hand side of your screen if you're viewing the webinar on a uh, laptop or on a desktop. If you're viewing on a Chromebook or an iPad, you may not have full functionality to be able to ask those, uh, those private questions. Uh, but when it comes around to the time to be able to ask public questions, you will have that ability um, to do so if you're on a Chromebook or an iPad. Just as a reminder, because the webinar is being archived, if you are going to ask a public question, um, you will be identified by name, and then I will give you control of the microphone, and your question and the following answer uh, will be recorded. 
If you're asking a question in the questions window or questions box on your, box on your control panel, uh, those questions uh, will be private. We may bring up the question itself, but will not indicate uh, the individual who asked that question um, to be able to provide an opportunity for our panelists to be able to answer those questions. We have two wonderful presenters this evening, both from St. James Regional Elementary School in Ridley Park, Pennsylvania. Our first, Lauren Loomis, is a second grade teacher at St. James. She began her career in 2001 teaching at St. Gabriel School in Norwood and taught there through 2012. Uh, since then, she has been at St. James Regional. Lauren's passion as a teacher is to nurture every child's individual ability and for the kids to learn while having fun. She, is, uh, she serves on the school advisory board and on the middle state team and, of course, on the technology committee. On her free time, she's a Eucharistic minister at St. Madeline's Church, where she also co-teaches summer educational workshops. Married for 25 years, she has two children who attended both Catholic elementary and high schools in Delaware County. She is pursuing her Google Educator Level 1 cert and in 2015 was a recipient of the Delaware County Excellence in Teaching Award. And Lauren received her Bachelor of Science in Elementary of Education from Cabrini University. And certainly we are grateful for Lauren being with us this evening. And our co-presenter, Susan Donovan, has been a teacher in the Archdiocese for 30 years at St. James Regional for the past five, and at Conshohocken Catholic and St. Cosmas and Damien, as well as St. Rose of Lima prior. She teaches, she has taught students in art, ELA, math, science, religion, and technology. Uh, outside of school, she is also a Eucharistic minister at St. Matthew's Church, formerly on the Finance Committee, and directed the Living Stations performance along with dialogue and music. And she has been a science coordinator for CCS, a math coordinator for St. James Regional, and of course on the technology committee for St. James as well. A wife of 38 years and mother of four children, all who also attended Catholic elementary school and high school. Uh, Susan received her Bachelor of Science degree in Elementary of Education from Westchester University and all, is also certified to teach religion. And I am certainly appreciative, Susan, of your time with us this evening as well. So as we are all set and ready to go, uh, it is time for the presentation. And Lauren, I am going to um, make you the presenter right now and the controls should be coming over to you in just one second. If you could just share your screen and I can see it. So you're all set to go. Lauren and Susan, the presentation is all yours. Thank you, Bill. Um, I would first like to start off with just thanking Bill, Aaron, and Alyssa for giving us the opportunity tonight to talk to you about STEM, STEAM, and STREAM. So thank you very much for giving us this opportunity. Um, we are here to talk about STEM, STREAM, and STEAM, and we learned that these ideas are driven not only by what we know, by but what you can do with what you know. It's more important than ever for our students to be equipped with the knowledge and the skills to, stop, to solve tough problems, gather and evaluate evidence, and make sense of information. These are the types of skills that students learn by studying science, technology, religion, engineering, and math. And these subjects collectively are known as STEM, STEAM, and STREAM. Our agenda for tonight um, is to go over the three characteristics that I've already talked about. Um, also, how STREAM is incorporated into our Catholic schools. We have uh, a couple STREAM projects that we would like to share with you and how we can incorporate each of them into the curriculum. Uh, we have a lot of resources and there's different types of equipment that you can use in each one of these um, categories. And then, of course, halfway through our presentation, we'll take some questions and answers, and also at the end as we see, see fit. Okay, so I figured that what we can do is just start off first just talking about what each of these mean. 
we started out with STEM, which was based on the idea of educating students in their four specific disciplines, which was science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. And then STEAM came along, which then took, not that it took the place of, of STEM, but it allowed our students to now connect with learning uh, other areas to incorporate art into these practices. So it kind of took it to the next level where you can um, now have our art incorporated. Then we moved on to STREAM where the Roman Catholic schools were seeking to find their Catholic identity in the schools and that's where they added religion into the word. So then you're now incorporating science, your technology, your religion, your engineering, your arts, and your mathematics. So that's just a little, this just gives you a little idea of what each three mean. Now before I go any further, I just want to um, let you know that we looked at your questions that you had uh, wrote out when you were registering. So we try to incorporate a little bit of each of your questions into this presentation. So we hope that we'll be able to help you a little bit better with that. And also that if you um, are just patient with this presentation because we know that we have educators from the preschool level all, all the way up to the eighth grade level and we try to incorporate a little bit of each of those things into this presentation. So the first thing that we would like to start out with is STREAM and the National Catholic Education Association initiated STREAM into our Catholic schools by adding religion into, this, um, into the, these categories. There's 10 characteristics that I found that were really helpful um, to what makes a STREAM school and I'm just going to go over them. All right, so the first is, of course, we want to incorporate our inter or integrate our Catholic identi identity in every area of the curriculum through projects on social justice. The second thing was to challenge learning environment with the integration of our Catholic faith. And this is just kind of giving you a little idea of how you can incorporate STREAM into your curriculum. Okay, the next one is just talking about uh, promoting innovation as well as a commitment to ethical behavior. Then you have the increase of participation. Um, I feel with when you're working with STREAM that you have so many resources that you can go to. You can go with your, the, the other educators in your school. Even though they might not teach the science or the math, or the um, technology that you can get together with all those teachers that teach all those other skills as well and to be able to incorporate stream into your classrooms and that does take the increase of participation with other teachers and even outside um, sources. Okay, the next thing would just be to increase your content literacy and then you also have your inclusion. And you can always, you know, when you get this presentation later on to go back and to um, read each of them individually, but I just thought it was nice to be able to see that how these characteristics are very important in incorporating STREAM into your classroom. One of the big things is you want our students to make sure that they're problem solving, working together collaboratively, and also working their, having their independence into these projects. Um, su success is defined in many ways. Um, I learned through different projects that I've done that not every child works the same or they learn the same. So every little bit that I feel that a kid participates is their success. Okay, the last two we have is a strategic planning as a blueprint and it's guiding our school's development and implementation of the stream curriculum. And the last thing is to just think forward, always just be creative in what you're doing 
Um, it may take some extra work into incorporating into this, but you just have to be creative. You come up with, you know, a theme or even just whatever is in your curriculum, and then just take each characteristic and see how you can implement it into the stream um, categories. One of the questions that was asked is how do teachers um, work together to come up with a project that could be a stream project or a stream theme? And I think the main thing is, is collaboration. Um, it doesn't matter what subject you teach. Like I said before, you don't have to be the math teacher. You don't have to be the science teacher, the technology teacher. It's great that you have those teachers, but my thing is I felt like when I was working and doing this that when I went to those teachers we could sit down and we could collaborate together to see okay this is what we're thinking this is what we want to do how can we incorporate this together um, so with that I would like to have Sue talk a second or so because she is our technology teacher and just to sh tell you how um, she has worked with other teachers into incorporating stream into their curriculum uh, just r recently, um, the third grade teacher came to me and said, "Is there a, a way that we could get the um, the, the the idea of uh, the food chain through technology?" And I love when teachers come to me and give me an idea because then I can take that into the technology piece and, and do something with that, and then they can take it back to their classroom after the piece is finished, and then they can relate other types of pieces of of the uh, categories into that. They can put pull into the religion aspect of it or the math part of it. But she asked about the food chain and we're going to be doing something, you know, with on using do, using Word or using uh, the drawings in Word and the designs and the third graders will go out and use Google and they'll research uh, the food, one of the food chains and they'll have to use clip art and all those kinds of things. So they have to learn the research and they can, you know, uh, collaborate when they get back into the classroom on their projects they can print it out and do certain things. Recently, too, we had the uh, fifth grade do what was called a liturgy ladder. Now they had to figure out the parts of the mass, and then they came into me and asked if I could help them with that. And it's great that you can collaborate on those kinds of things. And again, in using every type of piece of or program that you have in the computer lab, in the technology lab, I try to use them all kinds of ways. And throughout this presentation, I'll be sharing some of those with you. But this is the collaboration part. When the teachers come to me and tell me a topic, I love that. When I was first teaching without being the technology teacher, I only could get into the lab once a week and I couldn't use it too often and we didn't have Chromebooks. But now everybody's got Chromebooks so you can use it in the lab and then take it right into the classroom, which is, is a nice idea. Or iPads or they can get access computers a lot more often. Thank you, Sue. I appreciate that. Um, we put together uh, two projects, two stream projects that we thought might be helpful for any teacher who is either trying to start to incorporate stream into their curriculum or maybe they've already done it but maybe they're having a harder time of trying to incorporate some of these things. I know that this activity says that it's a K through, through third activity but Sue and I were talking that um, it really doesn't have to be just up to third grade. We know that, um, so the project is figuring out how to make a, a bed for Goldilocks and we know that the story is yes for younger children but the activity itself could definitely go for also the upper grades, the middle grades and stuff like that and the nice thing about this is that those students already have the background knowledge of the story of Goldilocks and the Three Bears. So what they had to do with this project was, of course, um, when I did it, I teach second grade, that I read, we read, excuse me, we reread the story over again just to get them that background knowledge again. But then the object of this lesson was to build a bed that was going to be sturdy enough for Goldilocks. So what that what that I what I did was um, I had provided them with materials that were either from my house 
or stuff that I had inside my classroom. There was nothing that at that point that I had to go out and purchase a lot of um, equipment, I don't want to say equipment, a lot of materials at a very expensive price. As you can see by looking at the picture, it was paper towel holders, it was pipe cleaners, it was tape, um, cardboard, I even supplied some tissue paper for them to use. So everything that had to do with this project was very inexpensive, which was also very nice. So what they had to do is I gave them the materials and they had to look at the materials first. Once they got the materials, they had to then draw a blueprint of how they wanted to make their bed. So that kind of incorporated the art into this into this um, project. And the engineering. And the engineering as well. Yes, yeah, thank you. Absolutely. Sue. Um, so they had to draw this first to make sure, okay, what are the supplies am I going to use? At this point, they didn't know is this bed going to work or not, but they had this was the beginning of the of, of starting their project. So they first drew it down, and then after they drew it, I looked it over, and then they were able to get their supplies. They were working in groups of four. So um, to just take it back a second, with second graders, um, we had to, they also had to learn how to work in groups. So to do projects like this at the beginning of the school year, um, I always start out with a project where they work together. So I think that's one of the main important things is to make sure that before you do activities like this, your children first, or your, excuse me, your students need to learn how they are going to work together. So one was a captain, one had to get all the materials, one had to do the writing, one had to be the reporter. And that's how like, I start at the beginning of the year to help them to be able to work in groups. So by the time we got to a project like this, they were pretty good at working in groups. Not that I'm saying that they were perfect and I wouldn't expect them to be perfect because of course there's always going to be where you know they all kind of want to do their own thing but at least they had the idea of working together so that would be the first thing that I would make sure with any group whether they're the you know younger children younger students or the older students so after they had drawn their blueprint and they got their materials they had to start to make their bed the funniest thing that I thought about this was they were so creative where they were making beds that I would have never thought of making we had bunk beds we had a canopy, we had a little bed with a trumbull, so it was, it was very, very neat to see the ideas of what they came up with. So then after they made the bed, they each got a um, paper of Goldilocks, and then they were given four pennies that they had to tape to the back of Goldilocks, and that's where they had to put Goldilocks on their bed, and they had to see if their bed was going to stand up and not break down. Um, some of them worked and some of them didn't, which was a nice thing about it is because they had to all go back after they were done to see, okay, what can I do, what can I do to improve this bed? So if my Goldilocks fell down, that means something wasn't done right. Um, and if their bed stood up, then we had to, they had to go back and say, okay, what else can I do to still improve this bed? What happens if I don't want Goldilocks on my bed anymore. Maybe I want to put Papa Bear on my bed. Is this bed going to be big? Is this bed going to be strong enough for Papa Bear? So they kind of had to go back. They had to collaborate again, figure out what, you know, will this last? Will it not last? So that was the main idea of this project. But then I wanted to take it one step further and I wanted to add the religion aspect into this project. And I, um, what we had done is we talked about what were the needs and wants of people that might be less fortunate. So you have Goldilocks here who maybe, you know, doesn't have a family or she wandered off and what does she need now? She needs a place to stay. She needs food to eat. So we incorporated how there's people in our society that are less fortunate than what we are. So that was one of the things that we had talked about. We also talked about how um, Sometimes that when you are, um, there's upsetting situations. Sometimes things are not always the way that they should be. And how can we take a situation that might be upsetting or might not be working out and how can we make it better? What are some things we can make better? Um, we were talking about thoughtfulness and empathy for others. What are some acts of kindness that we could do? 
what could we have done to make it better for Goldilocks? You know, how could we have made her feel more welcomed in our home if we were the bears? And how would the bears treat her? Um, we also talked about how to bring in the corporate works of mercy. That in our society and even in our own schools, we have students that might struggle with not having, you know, enough food to eat or you know, not having the clothes that they, you know, that, that every, you know, child might want and stuff like that. So we just kind of brought in the corporal works of mercy. Um, you can talk about how maybe your school can start a food drive and then give it to a local food pantry. I know our school has a uh, food pantry, so during special holidays our kids would collect food at Thanksgiving time and, and different um, other times of the season of our uh, liturgical season that we would collect these foods. So we kind of incorporated that into this project as well. And then we kind of added our science into it, talking about nutrition and what are some you know foods that are good for us and what are some foods that you know might not be foods that we want to eat all the time. What are some inexpensive foods that are high in calories, our sodas and maybe some of our snacks and stuff like that. So this activity I felt was a really good activity to start with for especially some teachers that maybe are not really sure how to incorporate this into a, um, a project. So hopefully with giving you some of the, these ideas you might feel more comfortable or you might even have better ideas that we can add into this and we would love to know that if we can add other activities into this project here that you would either um, let us know at the end of this presentation or somewhere in this presentation. So that would be one project that um, you can start and work with. The next stream project we started was, um, especially with the season of Lent now, um, we have prayer partners so our younger grades will match up with an older grade and we call them prayer partners. So we decided this would be a great opportunity to have all of our kids working together into this stream project and it was a very simple project just planting flowers um, so we all started off where each class met together on Ash Wednesday and we read a story from the gospel we talked about you know what our gospel story was about and then at the end of it we all took we all participated in, in trying to plant our flowers so we figured what we what we would do for you guys is to break it down into each of the different categories of streams. So of course, science we said was planting flowers. The second thing we took was technology, where each, whether it be the primary grades, the middle school grades, the elementary grades, researched some part of growing a flower. So we kind of broke that down for you for the primary grades, just discussing the basic needs of a flower going on to um, you know the internet and looking up different types of flowers um, and stuff like that. We had for the elementary grades taking pictures of the life cycle and then the middle school taking all that information that the younger grades did and now they're going to take that information and they're going to collect it from the other grades and now they're going to create a spreadsheet to make a graph. So it's not something that was really hard that we thought that we can incorporate into this Lenten project. Then we went, we talked about, you know, with religion, new life, and we know that, you know, at the end of Lent, spring comes and we have new life. So then once again, we broke it down that the primary and elementary grades, um, they could take lots of pictures of new life in the springtime. They can go outside as new growth is growing, take pictures. Um, and then we just kind of um, had for the middle school is to, they can talk about the Paschal mystery, the death to life cycle. Okay, the next part would be engineering, where they could design a planner, and some grades could do this if they wanted to, or they can get together with their prayer partner and come up with a planner so when their flowers grow, um, make these planners and then plant their plants into this planner, and then each year, add more plants into the planner. Um, for art, you can draw the stages of a plant, you can design your own flower, there's many other um, things that you could do for art. And then math, we thought that 
for the primary grades, they can measure the plant by non-standard and standard tools. The elementary grades compare and contrast with their grade partners or even just with their own their own class um, the the growth of their plants over the time by recording their data on a table. And then with the middle school, using a coordinate graph to design a flower and list ordered pairs. And on our, excuse me, on our next presentation, we have a picture of um, that being done. And with that, I'm going to have Sue talk about this. Yeah, this is just um, a fifth grader up could really design their flower and, and translate it into um, uh, a, a, a coordinate graph and, and then they list all the ordered pairs. Now I just did the stem down at the bottom here and listed all the ordered pairs for the stem and then the kids would, be, would, would have to do each piece of it and get their ordered pairs. They could also share it with a lower grade student and uh, without, the order, with, without the picture being on there and then they could draw it themselves and color it in and so on. But this really gives them an idea and, a, and, and reinforces the skill of graphing on a uh, coordinate plane. And it's, it's just as simple and they learn about symmetry and all those kinds of things with this. And, and it just is one way of bringing that into the math, uh, math department kind of thing. So um, that's just a picture of what I did. And, and other areas can be done with that as well. Thank you, Sue. You're welcome. Bill, at this time, do you feel that uh, we would like some question and answers or? Yeah, Lauren, I, th I think this is a, uh, a great opportunity to be able to uh, see if there are any questions and answers or any, <laughs> any questions uh, from our audience. So if you, um, if you have any questions that you would like to ask, if you look at your screen on, on the control panel that is floating off on the right hand side, there is a little pop out window. And at the bottom of that, you should see an icon, which looks like a hand with an arrow pointing up. Um, and if you would like to ask uh, any questions of Lauren or Susan, um, certainly now is a great opportunity to do so. Uh, Aaron, while we wait to see if there are any questions that anybody has, any questions that came into the, uh, into the question window? No, the question window has been all clear for a while. I'm just curious um, about the grade levels, um, how uh, you mentioned you, you started this with some of the younger kids. How did they, they do with uh, some of the STEM activities uh, as compared with some of the older kids? Um, I know through my, um, my science textbook that I have, there's a lot of STEM activities in there. And I feel that when they're doing these activities, they're so much more engaged. They, they love the, the, just the creativity in itself, like it surprises me what I think would come out of it does not come out of it sometimes and it's amazing what these these students come up with. And the earlier they get it, the, the more they're just take it for what it is, it is what it is and this is how I learn and they don't know anything different so they're going to learn that way and it's going to just increase and continue as they go into the upper grades. That's wonderful. And it looks like we are uh, quiet on the question front here as well. So Lauren and Sue, um, why don't you keep on moving on? Looks like uh, you've done a great job so far. Thank you. Thank you, Bill. OK, any, the things that I'm going to talk about are not necessarily all incorporating all five aspects of stream. Is it five letters? I'm not even sure if it's five letters or six letters. but. It starts with something. What I always like to do is start with one topic and then you can branch out into other areas as you see fit and as you go along. So the ideas that I am talking about here um, is from my background of being a science teacher and bring, being a math teacher and then finally being able to do all these things as a technology teacher. And what's nice, like I said in the beginning, is that as a technology teacher I can always go into the curriculum, I can see what they're learning and I can use every single piece of or every single program that I have at my disposal in the computer lab and I can use that to do all kinds of things with them so that they are aware that the students can uh, go forth and maybe do a book report or do a some type of presentation in an unusual way not necessarily just paper and pencil or a typical report. So this particular thing started with science um, and it can go in all different directions. So this one was actually a slides presentation on organelles that I do 
and that's about seventh grade, but it could be sixth, fifth, sixth, seventh, or eighth. And taking the pictures of the real part of the, the cell and give it a simile or metaphoric function. Now, I don't necessarily use the word simile and metaphoric, but actually the kids know about that. And when they present, many of them will say, and my simile is, and my metaphor is in the real world. So what they have to really do here is say, okay, what's the function of a cell wall? Well, this, the function of a cell wall is for support and protection. Where do I see that in the real world? I see that as a building, as a wall outside of a building. And basically, they understand and they can remember in a different way what that purpose of the cell wall is. It not only gives the student a mental picture, but it stretches their thinking process. We used to talk about rigor and relevance many, many, many times over the years, and this is one of those rigor and relevance kind of things. It's really applying their knowledge. Um, I have done this, uh, let's see, in, in math at this particular point, of course, this is science and technology, but math could talk about scale models of their objects and so on, and um, scientific notation of different things, especially the scale model or the actual drawing. We talk about scientific notation as it is uh, relates to that. Art, it's the creativity of the pictures and their choices of the pictures. They all have those choices. We like to collaborate a lot so you could get them together as groups to do this as well and see what each of them comes up with. In religion, you could use the concept of the church to find metaphors for each function as well. So what part of the church, I mean, you could go on a different route and just use the church as uh, the metaphor. What part of the, the church is, is there for support and function and so on, or our faith. Okay, I'm going to move on to the next. Where did I go here? Okay, sorry about that. Okay, this was a science slash religion type of thing. I've used the certificates you find in Publisher, and in November I usually do some project in the computer lab on saints. So this is actually a certificate from Publisher that I, I use to have the kids do saint reports. So I assign them saints from their religion curriculum. Uh, and I'll show you the, a, a close-up view on the next slide, actually. But um, you could also do the certificate of appreciation for a scientist or um, somebody famous in social studies and, and, and keep it going from there, an artist and so on, a mathematician, and give them a certificate of appreciation that states a small thing about them, what they did, and so on. Um, I've used Publisher also to do timelines on the geologic time scale. Actually, eighth grade will do a timeline of their time from kindergarten to eighth grade. So there's all kinds of things you can relate that to. It could be a sacramental timeline and so on. Concept maps, we can use them, and of course they're available in, in both. Um, um, you can create them in Google Slides and, you can, and Docs as well as Publisher and Word and so on. The next slide shows a little bit up close of the certificate of appreciation that we've done for, for instance, St. Joseph. And I, I really can't even see what it says here. Grade 6, oh, it just has our school name, St. James Regional, but St. Joseph. And then down here it says foster father of Jesus and Mary. He was the, uh, I can't even read what it says, but basically it describes. Down here it used to say uh, sponsored by St. Joseph University because we got their computers. We changed it to City of Nazareth, and then I signed it, and then also our Father who art in heaven signed it. Up here on the um, on the date line, it is the feast day of um, Saint Joseph, one of the feast days of Saint Joseph. And of course, they bring in a picture and they have to design it, but it really brings to life in a different manner a, a simple saint report. Okay, let's move on from there. Okay, in, in December or in March, depending on when I'm teaching about slope in math, we create this Santa Sleigh Ride Slope. And this really, um, this really, let me find my right slide here. This really teaches them about slope. It, it, it really reinforces that about slope. It gets them to use the smart board. They trace the, the shape of the United States. They get together with their group. They decide on 10 points that are actual real cities in the United States. They research. 
Some of them do uh, names like that relate to Christmas. Some of them have religious names like St. Paul or, or um, uh, San Diego or something like that. They have to draw the lines. They have to uh, use ordered pairs. You could see the X, Y axis on there as well. Um, they then uh, figure out the equation of the line and so forth. And that really is a little bit of everything. Then they can decorate it and um, however they want. Some of them use that and some of them use other types of things. So that's at Christmas time. In Lent now, I have one of the groups that are now going to do the same type of thing, but with Stations of the Cross. And they'll create Jesus' route throughout the 15th, well, the 14th stations and then the 15th stations, put the little Stations of the Cross along the way, connect them with lines, and again, that brings out the engineering, the technology, the, the collaboration. Um, there's no one right or wrong answer to this. It's open-ended, and that's the big deal with, with stream. And it also then is definitely religion, religious in aspect in, in, in nature. Um, we try basically, if there's not a piece of that into in, in that I haven't put in there, teachers can take back if it's in a technology and bring it and and integrate any other subject into that, which I can see a lot of things within this as well. Um, hopefully I'm not talking too fast. Oh, here we go again. I keep wanting to do this. Okay. This is just the directions for Matt's, the Santa Sleigh Ride sh Slope, if you ever want to go back over and do this. I use the chart-sized graph paper and um, with sticky, and it says sticky top one per student. Now we do this with a grant, with, with per student group at Must I Love, Must I Love that out. But basically, we do it in graph, and they trace the outline. It's a little hard on the smart board, because that, that smart board keeps going back and forth on you. But they, they enjoy using every aspect of it, and they do a, a good job with it. And it really, um, it really stretches their imaginations here. And they learn slope very well. <clears throat> Recently, we've, uh, we've done this Let's Go Shopping web, web quest, and this is the, the site here. What's nice about this is uh, it teaches them uh, or it, it reinforces percent, sales tax, discount, and learning that. If this is definitely an open-ended, collaborative, real-world experience in online shopping, and it involves the budgeting and the sales tax, sub subtracting any discounts. What's nice about this website is that it's totally it uses real stores, and you go to the site, and it has the tasks spread, spelled out for you. And you can go right from there to JCPenney, to Walmart, to, to um, Bass Pro Shop and Old Navy. They give you a budget and so on. So this works out nicely uh, when you are reinforcing those concepts in math. Of course, we're using technology. They're creating an uh, organized list or chart to record their information. They're collaborating with each other because I, I suggest to them how to do it, but they have to decide how they're going to do and who's going to do what part of the activity. One that kind of goes along with this at Christmas time, we do a Christmas shopping, and um, we kind of use a brochure. I go to Target and I get a brochure every year that they can use, and they're given a budget. But at this point in time, I tell them that they are the president of a philanthropic organization, and they are to provide um, toys and gifts for a family of so many, and it depends on the age level of the student. And then they're to shop through there and meet their budget and get within $10 of it with coupons and so on. So that really is putting into their minds that Christmas isn't just about them. It's about needy families and that we should be really looking out for other people and not thinking about what we are getting. What would you like to see someone else get? So that's the religious aspect in that particular slide or in that particular activity. Excuse me. Okay, then we're moving on to slide 14. Okay, this isn't, comes from a math, so it's kind of an engineering type of thing. So this is something about, a, this could be used as a slideshow, or they could make booklets, or they could do like actually a picture dictionary on one or two sheets of paper using the computer or using your uh, Chromebook or using the iPad or whatever you, you, you know, you have. Because this does not, this I do in the classroom, I don't even do this in the, in, in the, in the computer lab. And I've done this in different you know, not only while I'm a technology teacher and I was a math teacher, but when I, when I was a regular classroom teacher, I've done all of these things. And they can be adapted to whatever age level for the most part. This is just a, a slideshow on geometric solids when you get into that and use real world pictures of shapes that are found around the world and not just, you know, um, 
unusual shapes that you can find, not just normal things you'd find in your classroom or some kind of a model of one. You want to use the real world thing. Use to find the volume, the surface area. Uh, if it's, it can be simple, just an area for the younger students. You can research to find the actual dimensions. There is a, a, a thing on Google Earth that will give you those pictures and they will give you those dimensions if you have access to Google Earth and that particular part of it. There's also a site called Pix for Learning, the Pix for Learning app, and they are broken down into um, different countries. And I think I have that here somewhere. Let me see if it takes us to that. But this countries, you can go to this app here and you can get the, the, the pictures from the different countries or animals and so on. This is a great site that is uh, free images for your school. So that's, that's available if anybody's used that. I'm sure other people have used that, but I've used it for a couple different kinds of things besides that. Um, let me try to find where else I was here. Okay, let's just move on here. Okay, here's technology and engineering. Um, we use some of the old computers that you have in your school that you know we don't ever know what to do with. We have recycling, but it doesn't come all the time. They, the eighth grade, we have them in groups of four, and they can take apart the old computers, put them back together, learn the parts of the hard drive and the purposes for them. I do this in groups of four because I have a wonderful um, volunteer tech guy that um, will take them in and do this in the science lab across the hall. But this is, again, learning a, learning a little bit more in depth of what the computer is and why it works and how it works and what tools you need. And it, it, it gets them excited that they're not just, you know, using this computer for, you know, for what they need, of course, but they learn a little bit of how it, how it works and what's inside of it. That it's not just this box that goes from, that just works, because that's what I think it is sometimes. It just works. <laughs> I don't understand the tech part. Okay. We, uh, I found out about Ozobots last summer. I actually was not able to go to the, the Pac-10 because I had um, another workshop assigned. And uh, I heard about it through the, the, the little the emails we get, the group that we get, Ozobots. So then I explored that a little bit and I bought one for myself and for the school. And these are another things that are great for coding and engineering. The kids use them, the younger grades can use them as um, color coding and solving problems. They recreate the paths that you can see on here. Um, and, and it's just fascinating to see these little, these little things work and do and they, get, and they get excited about it. They can be decorated for, they come with all kinds of stickers and so on. So this is another you know, thing that they can do with that. The upper, lay, upper grades are learning coding with you know code.org and all those other types of things but they can learn this as well and, and, and they learn to follow directions, solve problems, they learn how to get someplace from one part to the other and the upper grade students can actually create their own paths and measure them and do those kinds of things. We can challenge um, them to do certain lengths and certain number of terms and let me go to the next slide um, where this is our color code reference sheet and you can challenge the kids to, to, to draw their own sheet out and kind of have a competition. And this can work down into whatever grade level you want because you could have a short line, a long line for the upper grades and just put in all these different commands and see if they can design some sort of a pathway that they can incorporate 10 commands and get there the fastest and who can win that. And you know how they love competition. Um, to see who can finish first. Uh, on the left you'll see the, the color codes of commands and instead of um, Python or jo JavaScript or Blockly, this is just color coding. But again, it's another way of them seeing that certain things can solve problems. Certain things um, can be used to help them to learn to solve problems and figure things out. On the right we have a video demonstration of, of um, one of the ones that Lauren did Using, my, using the Ozobot and seeing if we could actually use our own markers and stuff. We were just kind of experimenting. So here's that. Ready? There you go. 
Oh, he's purple then. Turbo purple. Oh, he did it. Okay. Ready? Oops. Oh, sorry, I just want to stop this a second. Um, the funniest thing that when we were doing this, I felt like I was a little kid again. Um, so I named our little robot Ozzo Bunny because you can put little different um, characteristics on your robot. And we just happened to find bunny ears. And we thought that since we're in the season of Lent and Easter coming, um, that we called it Ozzo Bunny. But we did. What we did after um, we used the kit was we thought to our, we, we wanted to see if we didn't have the markers that they gave us, could we make our own trail using the color markers that are on this chart? And we did try it. So we realized that you need to use fat, like the thick markers um, when you're making your trails. But when you're doing your color coding, that the color coding needs to be, if you look on your chart to the left, that they need to be that size because when I tried it first, I made the colors a little bit larger and my program wasn't coming out the way that I wanted to, so we tried it again. But I felt like I was one of the second graders in my class because I was having so much fun with it where I said that I want to get one over in the summertime and just kind of like fool around with it and see what we can come up with and then you know, have the kids do it. But I think it's a great idea. I know that um, the younger grades would love doing something like this as well because it gives them the opportunity to be creative, try different ways, see what's going to work for them, see what's not going to work for them. The same way that when I was doing it, when my, my color coding was too large, it wasn't working for me. So I had to think to myself, what do I need to fix this? But um, this was something that like I thought was really a really good um, equipment or I don't want to call it equipment a um, robotics it's really robotics I don't know it, it is equipment that has to be bought I know um, last summer it was at Barnes & Noble for fifty dollars and then I had the twenty percent educators discount that everybody can get and I think it's an uh, I think it would be very worthwhile for I don't we don't have enough of them we don't have them right now but I think we're going to be looking into that because I think you really can put these to good use as far as that whole th idea about hour of coding and then taking it into another month when you're not doing hour of coding you can do something else with this type of thing but you would need at least you know uh, I would think one Ozobot per uh, person. Last summer they did run a special at Target actually that was buy one get one free but I missed out on that one as well but uh, uh, you know I really think this is a value and it fits into this nicely this uh, topic nicely Okay, this is a geometric shaped scavenger hunt. Now, I use this in the geometry section, obviously, of math. But what I have done is they will, and you can either create, like I said before, a slideshow. It could be a booklet. It could be um, kind of a picture dictionary, depending on what it is. And I've done it both ways. I've done it like outside. They go outside and you know, just look at a look around and use their personal devices. And that this is the upper grades for their personal devices, I understand. But I can relate that a little bit later to the younger children. They could actually use Google and and, and pictures and picks for learning for this as well. But <clears throat> you provide a list of the geometric shapes found within the curriculum. We scour the neighborhood or in eighth grade because they're into church history. They go to the church building and they find and take pictures of the examples of such that, of different kinds of things. Um, and then they have to be able to explain it. And it doesn't necessarily have to be just geometry. It can include algebra terms, which everybody kind of has in their curriculum. Um, uh, direct, at least down the bottom, positive and negative integers, there are those kinds of things. But uh, a parabola would be a swing, you know, an open-ended kind of thing. But, you know, that, that's where the religion part comes into it. The religion piece comes into it with steam or s with stream. Um, but the kids collaborate. Again, they work in groups. It's open-ended. They, um, they have to figure out what they're going to do. They have to have a certain amount of time that they can do.
do this in and then when they come back into school they have to figure out how they're going to incorporate it and how they're going to do their slideshow and present to everybody in a timely fashion. So this is another type of idea that you can use with all different things. The lower grade kids can simply, you know, like I said, get pictures from online, get pictures from approved sites, from clip art, and it works just as well because they are finding them, or magazines, the old-fashioned way of using magazines. Um, you know, we, we know that a lot of people have National Geographic and things like that that, that people can, uh, you know, bring in. So that's uh, the way I used to do it, and they can create posters even. So we can get back to the regular pa pencil and paper, but we can also expand it into technology as well. Um, just a few, you know, other ideas about this. So, Bill, at this time, would we like to see if there's any questions? Um... Sure. So, this is Aaron. Um, we did have a couple Thank questions you. that came in through the uh, the message board here. Um, actually, well, first we have a couple comments. Uh, one from our dear friend Kay, who mentioned that the Ozabot company has a kit of 18 Ozabots with chargers, markers, and a case. Ooh. So it's all together, which is oh, that's great. great. Where, where did she say you can get that at? Well, she said the Ozabot company. So I'm okay. I don't know if it's a direct from manufacturer or if this is like an Amazon, but that there is a kit with 18 little robots. Oh, great. That's great. They are cute little things. Thanks, Kate. Uh, from ozobot.com. And then um, I think this, this came in back when we were uh, discussing the, your incorporation uh, of religion, and there was a, a message that said, Catholic Social Teachings is a great resource on the USCCB website. And I'll throw the link to that in the, uh, the chat window there. That'd be great. Um, the final question, or actually the, the question that came through, uh, do you feel that your teachers are collaborating more? Have they bought in? Um, they're beginning to, let's put it that way. They're beginning to share more and um, we're kind of getting together a little bit more with our subject areas and trying to bring some of these things in. Once, was going to yeah, once uh, once a week, we have a um, curricular uh, a subject meeting. So, for instance, what I mean by that is, so one week it would be religion, and then the next week it would be math, and then science, and so on. But at that time, we would all be together. So, if we're doing something um, collaboratively as a group, or even if not, that's like our opportunity to kind of get any feedback or any help from the teachers that are in that meeting and I feel that it's been very helpful because when you go into that meeting um, you, we have coordinators so those coordinators would also bring in um, maybe different materials different websites for you and um, I feel like it's been a lot uh, more helpful for the, our teachers at least right now because of having those weekly meetings um, and we do it first thing in the morning at 7.30 in the morning. Um, right, at, We do that and then we have our, like, our prayer meeting. But um, I feel like definitely that has helped out a lot. That's great. And ladies, um, we do have um, one, one hand raised, uh, and it is actually Kay Burgess. Okay, I'm going okay. to uh, give you the microphone. Kay, you are now unmuted. Uh, I'm just wondering how long does it take from the beginning of your lesson and doing all of the collaborating and to the end how long are your projects over what period of time it, it, it depends on what project it is really uh, recent my I'll just talk about the recent project I did with that um, the shopping, let's go shopping with Zunal, the, uh, that particular project. That started in one day, they had to get it all together, and then the second day they continued it. And same with the Christmas one. Um, and they were, if they did not finish it on their own, they had the resources that they could take home because they could use their, their Google site or their regular PC at home and get into the site and finish it on their own. So it all depends on other types of things 
if it's if it involves all may, may you know all the different subjects, it's going to take whatever time it takes throughout that subject. But I would think you could, you know, go within a week or or, or depending on what. Like I said, it all depends on that particular topic. Like I know for the one that we're doing for Lent right now, it's going to probably take a little bit longer than usual because we're planting the seeds from a seed. So of course we all need to wait for our plants to start to grow before we can start getting into um, observing the, the, the plan and making measurements and stuff like that. Now we can start doing the other aspects of stream while we're waiting, um, but for something like that we just, there's not a time frame as of yet because we do need the plants to grow and stuff like that. The one that I did with my um, students with the, um, the beds for the Goldilocks, it took us probably about two weeks or so incorporating everything into it. But not every day and every minute of every day. It was just a time frame of fit it, fitting it in. Yes. Right. Thank you. You're welcome. Great. Thanks, Kay. All right, ladies, it looks like um, those are the questions that we have at this point, so feel free to, uh, to continue on. Thank you. Okay, so these are just a few resources that, you know, I have found, and they're mostly related to math and science, which I'm, I'm more related to, of course, but um, these, uh, if you click on these links, you'll be able to get to that website. Um, it comes up as far as it goes, uh, and, and then you just play with it and see what's uh, important and what you need to do, but they're just resources, and you can get some ideas on these kinds of things. So this is from uh, PBS and the PBS Kids. But there's uh, all kinds of things that you can look at here. And I know Lauren has her own list of them as well. Um, where did our that thing go? Bill, did we lose our presentation? Oh, it's, it's still there. I, I can so. see you. I, I just saw your mouse move. Yeah, well, I can't see it here. Okay. It's hidden. Where is Forget it? it is. Click out of here. Okay. I see the YouTube window. Okay, hold on one second. If you guys just be patient with us for a second, I think we on our end we're not seeing it. The tab when I clicked off, the tab went away for the website. Like so the we're just going to closed. Okay, so we're just going to load it real fast. Thank you very much for just patiently waiting for us. Thank you. We're just going to wait for it to load and then we're just going to scroll all down and get us back on track again. Let's see where that led us. Okay. Oh, here we go. Perfect. What's your resources now? Okay, are we good? We are good. Good to go. Okay. So I put together um, a bunch of different resources, and I'm just going to um, talk about a couple of them. And then, of course, on your own time, you can go in and um, take a look at them yourself. Of course, Pinterest, I put K to 3, but that was just be when I was looking, it just came up as K to 3. You can find any grade um, for any of those. So as long as you just go right onto Pinterest and you type in um, STEM or STEAM or STREAM, you would be able to find some um, some information. Now Amazon, let's see here, they have where, um, they were calling it like a parent subscription, but I'm sure it could go for educators as well, where they have um, STEM toys. But with something like this, it is um, $19.99 per month. I don't know, maybe sometimes um, your home and school has extra money and they ask, you know, what can we help you with? So maybe they could, you know, one month buy some STEM tool, toys for you or, um, you know, other organizations that might have, you know, extra money that they would be willing to. But I just thought it was good to know that, you know, if you wanted to go onto Amazon to see what they have. But apparently the way that it works is um, when you sign up for it, it would you would pay $19.99 a month and each month, they would send you a different toy, but when you sign up, I think what you do is you put all your information in so they know what you're looking for um, and what age group and stuff like that. So that might be something that you 
you know, later on can go on your own. I just thought it was some good information from Amazon if you were interested. Um, there's a lot of resources from NASA, and I just kind of broke some of them down for engineering, science, rocket rocketry. I'm saying that right. I apologize if I'm not. But let me just click on this also. And um, I know this one is for just for engineering, but let me just move this a little bit around. I'm going to move this out of the way a second and move it down. Um, but what I like about this is, well, first, if you know, you can just put even up here STEM or STEAM. I'm not sure if they're going to come up with any stream activities, but once again, with being an educator, we can be very creative and take their lessons and incorporate mm -hmm. religion into it. And that's the main thing about stream is being able to take what you're teaching your children from your, curricula your curriculum and in incorporating the religion aspect into it. But what I did like about this was, um, excuse me that my mouse is all over the place a second, they give you the different lessons and then of course you would just click on whatever lesson that you were interested in, but then they also give you videos which I thought I know as being a very visual learner um, that you know watching these different videos kind of brought it, made it easier for me to understand. So that's what I liked about it. It just wasn't giving you the lesson, but it was also incorporating the videos that you can play as well. And it would be whatever you, you know, whatever part of the curriculum that you would be working with that you would pick out and stuff like that. They also have, let's see here, additional resources. So they got podcasts, different other websites and stuff like that. Um, down here, they break it down K through four, and then they have K, I mean, excuse me, um, five, three. So this is a very good resource to use. And like I said, you can just type in, you know, STEM or STEAM here, and it will bring it all up for you. And in each of those categories, it will give you videos and the extra resources. This one I thought was very interesting. It's called Fingerprint Art. So let me just pull this one up. And it kind of gives you the lessons, the lesson that you can use, and also the activities. But what I liked about this is it's definitely pulling in STEAM, but then you're able to pull in the aspect of talking about how we are all individual, we are all different, and what makes us different, and um, to bring to tie into the religion part of this. But this project here. I feel you could use it at through the younger grades all the way up to the middle school grades. And I thought that this, you know, something like this I'd be interested in doing myself because I thought that um, it'd be really interesting having the kids take their own fingerprints and then comparing and contrasting and, and seeing, you know, what's different about it. I just kind of thought this was a neat little project that, you know, I'm interested in doing. Okay, this one here, which is another one that I like. It gives you projects to use each month, so you just have to kind of scroll down a little bit. And here, each month, it would give you an activity. And I know that as I was looking through each of these different um, months, that um, I guess it might be still loading a little bit, um, but once it loads, it, it gives you each of the months. But the nice thing about it is you know, in February, you can incorporate, you know, talking about love into, which we, you know, are always incorporating with our children, you know, how do we love, we, how we love each other and, you know, we need to be loving children and students and people and stuff like that. I know it's still loading, so I apologize for that. Um, there's ones for Christmas. So even though they might say that there are STEM activities or STEAM activities, you can then just pull off of it and incorporate your religion into it and I think that it's not loading anymore so but if you once you go on your own and do this they will give you all the way to the month of December um, and then we also here's the coding which my kids love and they're second graders so we've already taught I've already started to teach them as well as I know Sue when she takes the um, each of the different grades into um, her, her computer class of doing coding. We've uh, incorporated this year the Hour of Code. Um, so the nice thing that I like about this 
uh, site is that they give you videos that you can watch and I know that when I first heard about coding I was like oh my gosh how am I going to do this I was very nervous and thinking oh my gosh this is I don't even know how to do this what am I going to do but watching the videos and then taking the time to do it and then I just explained to the kids you know this is my first time of doing it and we just worked on it together and they love it now so I incorporated into say we're done a lesson or maybe math we're finished math or we're doing math and some of the kids you know get done early instead of them just sitting there and trying to figure out what to do I have them go right onto their Chromebooks and it's already set up in their Google Classroom they know to go right onto the to code.org and they just start from where they left off and they love going on to um, doing this program there's also um, coding with Tinker Okay, which is another coding website that your kids can go on to. I'm just going to move down a little bit. Um, and it just explains what is Tinker. And then I, I thought that I'd see, yes, here it is, where you can break it down with, you know, I, and I thought that it showed where, let me just see real fast. Here's other videos. So if you're just a little nervous about how do I do this or how do I incorporate this, watching these videos, having the kids do these video, watching these videos, it just makes it much easier. Um, PBS Learning is another really good site and um, always, um, I love Teacher Pay Teacher. You can go on to Teacher Pay Teacher and put in the same, ones, like in their search um, STEM and STEAM once again and um, you can look for free free items and there is a lot of items that you can just get for free and download and then once again what you as educators need to do is how can I incorporate the religion aspect into this and sometimes you can't do it on everything but if you sit down and just kind of maybe get some ideas from other teachers and work collaboratively things always seem to work out Well, this this one here that we have, let me just see here. I would like to thank Alyssa for this. Um, she had written an article in Today's Catholic Teacher. Um, it was the spring of the 2017, which was the one that we just got recently. It was volume 50 and number three. And here there's a lot of stream apps that you can download for your students. Um, so what I did is I just kind of took from her um, article with her permission if she didn't mind if we use this in our presentation and I just um, just wrote down the different resources that you could use in your classroom um, some of them have a small fee um, some are free but as you you know research your and go on your own you would be able to see I think the most that one of them could have been was like two dollars and ninety nine cents but um, this was great because when I was reading this I was like oh Alyssa thank you we this is goes perfect with our presentation and hopefully it will help as well with um, our listeners tonight um, so you can just kind of take a look at that I know that in the article that she, um, Alyssa had said the Pope app might you know it's more for the older kids but once again you know you can talk about the Pope to your you know primary grade your early childhood um, children and stuff like that so I have it on here through the early childhood but it's you just have to take what you can out of it if you are an early childhood educator okay um, I w where we teach at St. James it's in the Delaware County um, district so I know thank you Aaron for um, sending us those emails but the Delaware County Intermediate Unit has, it was, it's been every other Tuesday where you can sign up to um, learn how to use their equipment. It's called Lending Library. And um, for you to be able to take out their equipment, you have to attend their workshop. Um, it's usually from like 4.30 to 6.30, but the main thing is when you go there, just learning how to use it. So what we had done is um, just wrote down the different names of the equipment and what each of them mean. So, you know, once again, you can go on your own time 
and read um, what each of them mean. But we just wanted to incorporate this into our presentation because there's some really neat equipment that you can use. Um, I've attended uh, a couple of them so far and they've been really interesting and very helpful for myself. I have not had the opportunity to take them out yet because once that um, the calendar goes out, you kind of have to get on it right away. And it seems like every time I try to get on it, they're already taken. So I'm hoping by next year that I could be able to take more of these out. But I was really impressed with the equipment. Um, I love the little bits, which is our second one right here. And what it is is you take these pieces, these electronic modules, and you snap them together. And the neat thing about it is they're by magnet. So when you're trying to put it together, if it doesn't fit, it's not going to let you fit because you need the positive and the negative to go together. Um, but what it is is they give you a guidebook and they start off with very easy um, projects and then you can work your way into the harder ones. But when I went there I thought how am I going to be able to incorporate this into my second grade class? But even just taking this and following the directions that was what I impressed me the most of thinking to myself, okay, is this going to be too advanced for my students? And I thought, you know what, it's not because even just taking this and having them, showing them how to put these together and what's going to be the end product of it, I think is going to excite them and then they're going to want to be able to go on to, you know, even take a project on their own and try to um, see what they can do with it. Directions. Um, so here's some more equipment um, that they have at the, inter at the Deborah County Intermediate. Now I'm not sure if we have some teachers that are listening tonight that are in either Chester or Montgomery County. So I did ask um, what happens if you're from another uh, district or I should say another county and you would like to um, lend this equipment out because I'm not quite sure if Delaware County, I mean excuse me, if Montgomery County or Chester County has something like this as well. But she did say, well, the first thing is that, you know, you can also look into it by calling your, your um, intermediate unit. But she also had said that you can um, pay a annual fee of $75. So maybe if this is something that your teachers in your school would be interested in doing, maybe the home and school can pay for it. Or, you know, going to your principal, maybe there's something in the budget that would be able to, you know, help you out. But it will be $75 for the year. Um, once again, you do have to go to these workshops for you to be able to learn how to do them yourself before you can even take them out. But these were really helpful um, workshops. Um, I was impressed with them. So it might be something that um, you're going to be interested in. I know that I think, um, I think her name was Rebecca, that she was saying that there might only be a couple more left before the ending of the school year. And they won't start up again till next, um, uh, probably like September, October. Aaron, I'm, if I'm wrong with that, you can chime in and you know let us know. But um, that's what it seems like. Okay, and there's just some more different types of equipment. They were very fun using. I, I was very impressed with them. And each of these are in you know if you break it down into our curriculum and stuff like that. So we would like to end with the main thing is you just need to be creative. You need to think out of the box. You need to use um, resources. Use, your, use other educators in your school. Use your social networking. I do have to say I went to the Ed Camp, which was a couple weeks ago, um, that Bill and Aaron and Alyssa ran, which was a great opportunity for myself to learn new information, but also to meet other educators and hear what they had to say. And one of the uh, workshops that I had gone to, I shouldn't say workshops, one of the sessions that I had gone to was STREAM. And there was a teacher there who was talking about saying, she said that what they do is they pick like once a month and the whole school will do one, like a STREAM activity. So it might be where the preschool does one part of it, the you know first grade does another part, like each grade would take a part of that project and they would do that and then they would incorporate it together. So that might be something else that you might want to think about where if you can get your other teachers and your educators together to collaborate and come up with a theme and you know inside doing your, your other curriculum but 
she said that, you know, it does take some time, but she said it worked really well for their school, and that was something that I would like to take back and hopefully maybe start next year at St. James Regional. But um, the main thing is just you need to be creative, and there's so many resources and so many other educators that are out there that, you know, would be willing to help. And I don't think we have to have every piece of everything in each activity. You try to do the best you can, but you want to try to always integrate technology and you want to always integrate uh, different aspects of it as much as you can. Um, sometimes you can't put everything into one particular theme or one project, but you try to do that. I think all of us have been doing a lot of these all the time. We always try to integrate. We always try to um, put one subject with another subject and how can we put them together. But I think that like, like Lauren said, it's basically thinking outside the box. You're, as long as you have technology, you have all different various strategies that the kids have to come up with them on their own, that they're collaborating, and that there's more than one solution to the problem. Like there's more outcomes that, that are, are there, and they don't have to be necessarily, you know, fact, they don't have to be factual all the time. It doesn't have to be a math problem that is solved by uh, one simple answer. So we just have to uh, be creative, and I think everybody's got that creative streak. If you're a teacher, you have to be creative and flexible. So that's all I'm leaving with that. Okay, Bill, I don't know if we want to ask any more questions, or um, you can let us know how, if you want to end with this. Absolutely. Thank you both very much. Uh, Aaron, uh, before I open it up to, uh, to comments or questions that the, um, that the attendees may have, uh, Aaron, anything that came in on the, uh, on the question window that you want to highlight at this point and ask Lauren and Susan? Yes. So um, I just sent out a link. This is courtesy of Kay. Um, she mentioned that she took a Raspberry Pi workshop online through the uh, Google CS First. So she shared that link with me, and I, I sent that out to the audience. Um, and then my question, I was just curious um, how the parents received uh, the, the STEM, STEAM, STREAM model um, that it sounds, I mean, it, it sounds like the kids did a wonderful job, but how did the parents receive this coming from, a, you know, this didn't look like my type of education growing up. How, how were they when this kind of got rolled out? I've never had an issue with parents. They like it because their kids are excited about it, and uh, and you always have that rubric that comes back to what is what are they getting out of it? Is basically you know what we have we have to provide a grade somewhere along the line for this, and you do come up with that rubric for it, and they know that in advance. And uh, you know I've never had a problem. To, the parents like it because they think their kids are advancing in the real world, and they're going to be able to fit in better. I also have heard that, you know, the parents will say to me how excited their kids come home and they're talking about what they're doing in the classroom instead of when mom or dad says to them, what did you do today? Oh, we did nothing. They're now talking, oh, we tried this, we were doing this. And the parents love to hear that because they feel like, you know, their kids are excited about their education. That's great. Excellent, thank you. And if we have, uh, if anybody would like to ask a question of Lauren or Susan and what they presented, uh, feel free to to raise your hand uh, at this point. Again, on your control panel, uh, the little window pops out to the left, right on the bottom. There is a hand with an arrow pointing up. Feel free to press that um, if you if you have any questions that you would like to ask. Um, Lauren or, or Susan. Certainly a, you know, a great topic. Um, I love it particularly because it really puts, um, you know, for, for, for us and for our department, it puts the technology in context. Um, it's not, you know, doing tech for tech's sake, but it, put, it puts it into a framework. Um, what would, if, you know, if a teacher or an administrator was looking at starting or encouraging this in their school or in a given classroom, is there one initial step that you would recommend or a couple of, you know, first uh, steps that you would recommend um, for the, the teacher or the, or the administrator to consider just to start off? Um, I feel that, like, the first thing I would do is most likely just go straight to my principal and, you know, tell my principal, not tell, but, you know, talk to my principal and tell her that this is an idea that, I, you know, that would be good to start into the school. 
It's mm -hmm. really just getting the idea in and, and, and explaining what it is because, like I said, a lot of us have been doing this all, all, all along, but we haven't really collaborated with each other on it and we haven't really jo joined the subjects. We have joined certain parts of it but haven't really stretched it far enough. So I think it's something that's been there that just has to be stretched on and to tell your principal that's really what it is and then just to get the ideas out, just to keep floating that stream and that being in, the, in everybody's consciousness that this is what we're, we're, we're going towards and this is what we're, we're trying to achieve little by little. It takes, it takes time to do all of these things. You do it little by little, baby steps. Excellent. And it looks like um, everybody is quiet with the question. So certainly I think uh, your presentation was well received and um, obviously well prepared. Uh, and, you know, as we as we share out the um, the presentation itself, um, you know, feel free as you know, not in just only attending tonight, but feel free to opportunity to be able to go through the presentation and um, explore all of the links uh, for yourself on your own time so that you can see uh, the great resources that Lauren and Susan put together tonight. So uh, Lauren and Sue, before um, before I, I start to formally close this out, any closing thoughts that you may have um, for our attendees this evening? Um, I just hope that after um, listening and watching this presentation that hopefully you could leave with one idea that maybe we have shown you tonight. Also, if you know you have any questions or even you know anything to help out with our presentation, um, the page that we have up right now, please get in touch with us, contact us, um, and let us know if we can help anymore or if there's something that you can help with us. We would appreciate. Same here. If you if you have any ideas to add to whatever you know I had put out there. Um, and how to stretch some of those things into the other areas of the curriculum. That would be great. And, and again, just to, to, to use what you know and what you have and, and feel free to share that with us as well because, you know, then maybe we can come up with some other things and use them as well. It's always great to have additional information from everybody. Thank you. Well, excellent. And, uh, it, you know, on behalf of Aaron and Alyssa, I just want to you know, thank you both for all of your time and preparation uh, for this evening's webinar. Um, we certainly appreciate it, and I know uh, everyone who is in attendance this evening uh, appreciates it as well. So thank you very much. Thank you, Bill. Thanks, Bill. Thanks, Aaron. Thanks, Aaron. Thank you, guys. It was wonderful. I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> it was great. And uh, just for all of our attendees, uh, as always, um, all of our social media accounts, we encourage you to um, you know, to meet us where you are, and uh, but also to engage not only with us in the technology department, but um, your colleagues and your peers. Um, one thing that we have is we have a tremendous network of teachers in the Archdiocese of Philadelphia throughout our 104 elementary schools, our network of, uh, of IMS schools, and also our high schools. So at any point, feel free to use the hashtag AOP Tech, um, and you can connect with us on Twitter, Facebook, uh, YouTube, Pinterest, and Instagram. And as well, the uh, aoptech.weebly.com resource site, that is our resource site where you will find um, you know, links to, to sign up for, for future webinars, uh, the technology plan, and other great resources. Uh, in the chat window, uh, it has been posted the, uh, the closing feedback form. Um, we work to provide the, the best topics and content for you, um, we are, and we are always looking to improve. So we would ask for your feedback. Um, that is located in the chat window. And again, along with all the resources that you saw this evening, you will also receive uh, that feedback in an email that will be sent to you uh, just about this time tomorrow night. Um, registering for, for next month, just as a reminder, uh, registration is now a three-step process. Um, you can register through the aoptech.weebly.com site. Uh, for next month's webinar. The registration will be live here within the next few days. Um, that will take you to a pre-survey to be able to give our presenter next month the opportunity to look at what you're interested in learning. And then you will uh, be sent to a link to register for the GoToWebinar session itself. If you're also registering for Act 48, that is done separately through the Courseware website. 
And next month, uh, we are uh, excited as we close out our webinar series for this academic year. Uh, we are excited to have with us um, an international educator and speaker in Mrs. Shannon McClintock Miller, a former teacher librarian from Iowa. She is currently a educational consultant and leading the Future Ready Librarians Charge out of the Department of Education. Uh, she will be presenting for our elementary webinar on digital literacy in the elementary classroom. And that registration uh, will be up on the uh, aoptechweebly.com site uh, within the, uh, the next week or so, and it will also be emailed out to the principals. Uh, so once again, um, to Susan and Lauren, we are grateful for, for all of your time and preparation for this evening. And we are grateful for everyone who attended uh, tonight. Look for the, uh, the archived version of tonight's presentation to be posted on our YouTube site at AOP Tech. Uh, by tomorrow afternoon, and then look for the resources and the feedback link tomorrow night in the email that you will receive. So on behalf of Aaron and Alyssa, and, uh, and, and Alyssa's new baby, uh, we thank everyone for being with us tonight. Have a wonderful evening and a great end to the week. Take care, everyone.